Welcome to Little Home Projects. In this video, I'm going through all my steps for starting seeds for the new gardening season, including mixing up my dirt, choosing my seeds, and trying out paper pots versus pre-made jiffy pots. Each year I start by pulling out my seed rack. This is something I made a few years ago, and it's been useful ever since. In my house, space is at a premium, so whenever I design something, I try to make sure it can take up as little space as possible. This rack, when I'm not using it, collapses down to about 4 inches tall. This way I can store it in all sorts of locations. The components consist of galvanized electrical pipe, as well as some galvanized pipe clamps on each corner. Assembly is really easy, and all it requires is a screwdriver. Each of my pipes fit into the pipe clamps on each corner. The top portion fits over those pipes and everything just slots into place. The screwdriver tightens up the pipe clamp so that everything holds nice and snug. It is a little bit wobbly, but it's definitely sturdy enough for what I use it for. And this design I think as well allows for expanding it down the road if I ever wanted to use multiple layers. I have a regular shop work light that I use for my plants. I picked it up for about 20 or $25 at the hardware store. I also have a piece of cheap chain, it was about $3. I can use that to hang the light from the rack. I just have a couple of small nails at the top of the rack that the chain hooks into. This allows me to adjust the height of the light as the plants grow. I always add any excess chain over to the other pin, that way I'm confident that nothing's going to fall apart by accident. And when it's all assembled, I find it gives great light for the plants, and it's worked well so far. When it comes to seed starting pots, I'm a fan of whatever's the simplest or the cheapest. In the past I've used paper pots, these fiber pots, or just leftover plastic containers. This year I'm going for simple over cheap. These fiber pots were only a few dollars for 10 and they get the job done really fast. The real benefit is that down the road I won't need to transplant them, I can just put them straight into the garden. On the extreme other end though is cheap, and I think the best cheap solution I've ever used is paper pots made from newspapers. These are a little flimsy and bouncy when they're empty, but once you fill them up with dirt and give a bit of water, they become solid and they keep their shape. Making these paper pots is actually really easy. You just need any kind of container. I find a small tomato sauce can works great, but a spice jar will work as well as any other type of can. The larger the can, the larger the paper pot. Once you've cleaned up the can, if you take off the paper wrapping, make sure to clean all the glue off as well. Flip the can over and punch a couple holes in the bottom. When you're wrapping the paper pot, this lets some air flow through to the bottom and it makes it easier to take apart. If your tin can has this little metal spike, make sure you flatten it down or cover it up with some thick tape. I'm just starting with a newspaper. This one happens to be, I don't know, looks like maybe 10 inches by 12 inches. It doesn't really matter exactly what size you use because the extra layers of paper doesn't matter. This one, I'm going to fold it in half to get a nice long strip. And as you make more and more of these, it gets faster and faster. I could use it like this, but I'm going to make two of this and just slice it. I like to take the top rough edge and fold it down so that it's nice and clean again, and that gives the top some nice rigid stuff to work with. And then something like a soup can. Um, the soup can works very well. Uh, anything will work like that is roughly this size. Here, some silicone much the same size. Um, I found that uh, spice jars are reasonable and it's just a matter of how big you want it to be. So but this little soup can does the trick. Just going to give it a roll and roll it loose. You don't want this to be tight. You want the, the can to come out. Give it a loose roll. On the bottom you just want to have I have to just go over about just over halfway. I find fold doing the first fold on the piece of paper here makes it the strongest. Fold, 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 fold. Press it down so it holds its shape. Take the can out because we did make we made it loose. That comes out really easily. And then give the top another little fold in. That just makes it hold its shape nicely. There you go, it's your rough shape. Once you fill that with dirt, it'll sit fine and you'll be able to use it. 
for the dirt that I use to start my seeds in, you can really use a lot of different options. You can mix something fresh from all the different ingredients, but honestly there's pretty cheap and very fast ways to do it. I've decided to mix 50-50 mix of potting soil and seed starter. I figured this will give me the best bang for buck as far as the seeds being able to grow well and not having to fertilize as to get going. I really want to come up with a system here that just runs and I don't have to worry about it. Do make sure with your potting mix that it is an indoor variety. That uh, generally means that it's been sterilized and it's not going to have mold and things like that ready to grow in it. Looking at the seed starter mix, I found that it was it's very light, very fluffy, uh, very dry as well. Um, this is a definite basic mix of just cocoa powder, perlite, uh, and just a little bit of additional organic matter. It's, it's very fluffy, very light. The potty mix, by contrast, is only a little bit heavier. Uh, it's got a darker, richer color, and it does hold together when you give it a squeeze. It's a little bit more moist, but, but generally speaking, I think, looking at these two things, I probably could have gotten away with just using the potty mix and not bothering with the seed starter. But I've got them both, so I might as well mix them together and make it go twice as far. To mix them together, I just dumped them both into a large plant pot. I'm going to be using these plant pots for my tomatoes down the road, but for now it works well as a bucket for mixing my soil. While mixing this soil, I missed a pretty crucial step. What I really should have done was add a bit of water and mixed it in. This makes the soil be able to wick water a little bit better when it's in the trays, and I forgot to do this step, which makes it a little bit more difficult down the road to get the water started. You'll see what I mean towards the end. But for now, I'm just mixing the soil up, making sure to get all the way to the bottom, bring it to the top, mix it thoroughly so that it's all evenly distributed. With all of that mixed, it's time to add the dirt to my pots. For the first batch of fiber pots, I'm only going to fill them up halfway. I have a little trick that I like to do with my tomato plants. When the seed sprouts, the roots will grow just like normal, but as the plant gets taller, I can add additional soil to the pot, and the stem will send out new roots growing all through the new dirt. I find that this gives me a stronger plant down the road. For the paper pots, I just fill them up all the way. Normally when filling up pots, you would leave a little bit of space at the top. Because I plan on bottom watering these, it's not really necessary. I might as well fill them all up and give the roots the most amount of dirt to work with. This year I'm going to be trying out a few new varieties as well. Right, since I'm growing tomatoes at my in-laws, I will be doing a variety of tomatoes. This will be my first time in that space. Rodiger tomatoes, indeterminate. Jelly bean hybrid, also indeterminate. One called mortgage lifter, indeterminate. And big beef hybrid. I'm going to grow two each of these at my in-laws house with a variety of basil. To start, I'm going to get my tomatoes going because they're already late for this time of year. Because I want to have eight tomato plants in the end, plus an extra of each just to make sure if something doesn't grow, I'm going to do rows of each plant. So I've got four, four varieties. I've got four rows that works out well in this, this pot. So I'll do three of each variety, and that way they'll be organized and I'll have extras in case I need them. So I'm going to start them halfway full, poke a little, little space for the seed to go into, like that. So row number one, Rediger's. So I'm going to plant three per pod, just so that there's backups in case they don't grow. I'm expecting them that they'll grow no problem, but this way, if they don't, there's backups. And if I get to them, I can always transplant them. I won't, though. I'll end up killing the ones that, that I don't want, but... My soil's very dry right now. I'll water it later. Back into the, to the thing. And I like to pinch these off in two directions so they won't accidentally open. And I'll put that away for next year. Just have to repeat the process with all the other plants. Just finished up these jelly bean hybrids, and I'll tell you, there was not many seeds in this pack. I would say there's maybe 20 seeds in there, 25 seeds. That is a, a bit of a high price for so few seeds. I might get one more... I might have enough for next season, but that's it. Like, that was not... It wasn't a lot in this pack. Also, these big beef hybrids also didn't have a lot of seeds in there. So maybe it's the hybrid that has fewer seeds in the pack. But, yeah, less than that one as well. Something else I like to do is, uh, while I'm getting these seeds planted, before I label everything, I just stick the seed packets behind each of the rows so I know what was where. This way, when I label them, I'll, I'll know which, what everything was. For my basil, generally speaking, I always go with the sweet basil. Sometimes they have different names on them, some in slightly different packages, but generally I find sweet basil is sweet basil. Uh, I always plant a purple and a green. I find the different bugs eat these differently, so if 
one gets attacked, the other one might not. So I'll plant both of these, I find, for flavor, but they both taste the same. I might also throw in some lime basil. I've never really used it for much, but it smells good, so if I have extra space, I'll plant that as well. I'm gonna use these handmade pots as my basil starters. They're just nice and simple that way. I'm not, really, I'm not gonna bother labeling these because they're all either gonna be purple basil or regular green basil. Basil seeds are really quite small. I'm gonna do two or three per plant as well, and in the end, I'll be thinning it up to just one. Same idea, just gonna be poking a little divot in. It doesn't really matter as long as they're spread out a bit. See how dry my dirt is right now. Then roughly one per per little divot. And I'm gonna do the first half all with green basil. Gonna poke them down. Just make sure they get covered just by a little bit. Alright, and continue on with the purple. This year I'm trying my old cucumbers from last year as well as new ones from this year. So last year was National Pickling Cucumber and this and adding this year is Cucumber Tasty Green. So I'm going to be doing six of each. Um, last year I put 12 plants in my community garden space and that was way more than I could deal with as far as pickling goes. So I'm going to do six plants at my community garden and six plants at my home garden and I'll divide the two types up between the two places. For the cucumbers I'm going to do two per plant, and I think, I mean, I think they would actually grow just fine like this, but I'm gonna end up thinning them to just one per, one per pot in the end. This soil is from fresh from the pile, and it's much, got a bit more moisture in it, so it's actually holding the indent quite nicely. Nice big seeds, easy to see and do. All right, so that is, this is the National Pickling breed. That's six pots. Put those back for next year. These should be good for multiple years. I've already had them for, I think, two years. Make sure I put those back here for now. And I've always just kind of gone with whatever is on the shelf. This year I'm actually trying different varieties side by side, which I'm excited to see how they change and if I end up with a favorite overall over time. So I've been told that it makes sense to experiment as a gardener and try different different breeds to see what grows well in your soil and what grows well in your area and also maybe you like one way more than another. All right back in the box. All right so these guys I'm going to put three seeds per basket and I have no intention of thinning them out down the road. This makes everything. I'm gonna cover them up now. Just push the dirt over, just smooth it out across the entire thing. If I've done something wrong with any of these seeds, please let me know. I'm just going by what I've done in the past and I could be doing anything here wrong. So if I've planted them too deep, too close together, wasted my time on something, let me know. I'd love to adjust. I don't have much of a community going yet, so I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. All right, those are all done. I'll finish the other side. What I need to do, these are all in is go get some water and get make sure these get thoroughly watered okay that's everything before I water them though I'm gonna get some proper labels going for my labels I'm gonna use an old plastic container something nice and tall like this makes it really easy I'm just gonna cut off the ridges and all the way down to the bottom so I'm just using the cylinder on the inside I'm going to use these as my stakes. So I'm going to go with about a finger width, so maybe a half inch strip. Like that. And this becomes your label, so you can write what it is there and stick it in your pot. That one container made, so I made 17 little, little labels, so so now also you want to make sure you label these something that you're going to remember. So not just all tomato, you want to make sure you know which one they are. So for me, I'm going to go with T for tomato and co. Big beef. Okay, so I've labeled my different labels. I've got one for each of my plant pots 
for my different tomatoes. Tomatoes, when they're little, you'll have no ability of telling them apart, so you want to label every single plant of what it is. This way I'll be able to tell all these apart, and I won't have to worry about which one's which. I know the difference between green basil and purple basil. I'm not worried about that. So I've got a pitcher of water here. I don't know exactly how much volume is in this, but I'm going to guess it's around a liter and a half. Given how dry the soil is and how big the trays are, I don't see there being any problem in these trays taking up this entire liter and a half per, per tray. So I'm just going to go into the center, try not to hit the actual dirt because I want them to just soak up the water. And it looks to me that the bottom is currently whoop, starting to float just a little bit. I'm not worried about that. Not what I want, but they'll, they'll settle down in a minute here. So it looks like I have maybe a centimeter of water on the bottom. Because it's so dry, they're not going to want to soak it up right away. It's not going to want to wick, but it will eventually get in there. And if it doesn't start to soak, I will sprinkle the top just to get a bit of water going through. I've left this running for about 10 minutes, and it is slowly starting to soak up. The water level is about half of what it was before but it's taking its sweet time. And this is definitely a side effect of not having wet soil when I put it together. I'm gonna to turn the camera off, let it soak for a while. I'll add more water and we'll see what it looks like in a little bit more time. So I've let these sit for a good amount of time, a couple of an hour or so. And you can see they've soaked up all the water in the tray and it's still not completely soaked at the top. So I'm gonna do another pitcher's worth of water in the tray to get it, get them all good and soaked. Okay, these have been sitting for about another 40 minutes and they are much more saturated now. And they've, they've gotten moist all the way to the top. So there's still a good amount of water in there. I'm gonna let it sit overnight because they're seeds. They're up out of the water. I'm okay with the amount of water that's in there now. So that is all the steps for getting your seeds started. Uh, it'll take probably about two weeks for them to sprout up. So I plan to do more videos as they grow and anytime I do any additions or changes or work on the seed trays I'm going to document that in the next videos. So if you want to see those please hit subscribe. If you like this video give it a thumbs up. I've um, got a lot more gardening stuff coming this year. So thanks for watching. This is Little Home Projects. I'll see you soon.